Time now for our KSAT Q&A, and he is back. Mayor Ron Nirenberg is joining us after what's been a bit of a break uh, here on Tuesdays. Welcome back, Mayor. Glad to have you. Great to be with you all. Sorry about the technical difficulties just a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, it's okay on our end as well. But there's a question that uh, we want to ask you about that we've touched on a few times here before. <laughs> yeah. Future of pro sports, in particular, the Spurs potentially moving back downtown. We understand there's a possible lease happening with the Institute of Texan Cultures. What's going on there and how could this impact where the Spurs play? Sure. Well, you know, there's been a lot of discussions about downtown development, uh, sports included, and we have a number of major venues down there that uh, need investment, uh, including the Convention Center, the Alamo Dome. Uh, we have major redevelopment going on at the Hemisphere. Uh, and so we want to do this in a comprehensive way. Of course, as uh, we look at the corner of that uh, area of downtown, one of the most important corners, uh, a central part of that is the ITC property. And, and so uh, we have been engaged uh, in, in following that process. And, and uh, we believe that it could be a, a, an important part of moving forward. Now, how this all relates to, um, you know, the ongoing discussions about the Spurs and, and other sports, uh, including UTSA downtown, Obviously, uh, in creating a comprehensive vision for downtown redevelopment, sports and entertainment are a big part of that. And we want to do this not in, in one-offs and piecemeal. We want to have a bigger vision for how we develop one of the unique downtowns of America. So uh, that's how it all relates. Uh, I don't have anything further to share, but I, I will tell you that um, you know the opportunity to have a broader discussion about the long-term future an impact of a great downtown like San Antonio is one we can't pass up. Yeah, and, and you know, I read something about all-star games and NBA all-star games in particular, yeah. and there's a certain requirement for a number of square feet in a convention center in those towns, and San Antonio is short of that. Could you see the convention center and a possible arena coming together to kind of fit in and make it possible so San Antonio, I mean, it's been a long time since San Antonio's hosted I can win uh, well, an NBA All-Star game. Well, I will tell you this. The Alamo Dome has never been busier. And we have UTSA with one of the great home fields uh, advantages in college sports now. And they're a rising program. Uh, we do know that uh, San Antonio continues to be a major destination for major events, including the Final Four, which is coming back next year. Uh, but we need to remain competitive and already in the convention center space, the major event conference space that the convention center is largely a part of, we've lost some traction in our competitiveness. And uh, in fact, we've lost a considerable amount of business because of lack of space over the last several years. That was one of the reasons why we brought this to the attention of the legislature and they granted us this opportunity to have uh, state sales tax now go into the redevelopment, the improvements of these facilities. So um, in my view, uh, any of these facilities, if we're going to consider putting more investment into them, we want to make them tier one facilities. Um, we want to be able to compete for the best of the best. Uh, and I'm talking about, you know, those final fours. Uh, I would love to see San Antonio compete for the college football playoffs in the future. Um, you know, the sky is the limit because we have one of the great downtowns of America. We're a growing city. We have major markets here. <clears throat> excuse me, and, and we have facilities now that can hold a lot of people if improved in the right way. So to me, this is about the future, uh, our profile in entertainment, our profile in professional sports. And we're going to be thoughtful about it, but we're also not going to waste money. We're going to do it and we're going to invest in it. So we have the top tier. Uh, uh, when we make investments, we want to make it make sure we're, ma we're making the best of the best. Okay, it's intriguing, this potential lease. You know, we'll continue to ask about it. <laughs> we want to switch gears now, though, to what's coming up for you later on this week. You're making a trip to Brownsville, uh, meeting President Biden there. Same day, Donald Trump is going to be in Eagle Pass. What are you hoping to share with the president, especially with what we know about the impact of migrants making their way to San Antonio, what we have seen with the Migrant Resource Center here? Well, I will tell you this, Myra. This is not a time for politics. Um, the issues of immigration and migration are not ours alone. Uh, 
Um, and we in San Antonio deal with the impacts of migration through partnerships with the federal government that help us have the resources necessary to deal with the inflows. We don't control here in San Antonio who comes across the border. Um, I will tell you, I will give credit to the president for making a good faith effort to work with a bipartisan group of senators to create solutions to this issue. Um, and we saw that through a bill that right now an extreme group of uh, Republicans are refusing to even consider and debate. Uh, what we need, uh, number one, is uh, resources to deal with the impacts at the local level. Um, we also need uh, some good faith discussions on the policies that need to change. For instance, we have been very vocal about the need for uh, work authorizations. People who are here uh, waiting for their uh, legal process to unfold um, are here and, and they're dependent on social services uh, because they're not allowed to work, in some cases, years at a time. And if Congress, uh, and including this group of uh, extreme Republicans, don't want to even debate who qualifies for asylum, then we have to have some alternatives, including work authorization. I will be down there with a bipartisan group of mayors who are essentially saying the same thing. We need uh, we need politics to be set aside. We need solutions, which include good faith negotiations about the policies that need to change. We also need resources uh, for Border Patrol and, and the adjudication process. And we need resources at the local level to make sure that we can keep up with the promises that I've made uh, and others have made that we're going to keep the public safe. We're going to keep this an orderly process and we're not going to lose ourselves in the process. We're going to continue to treat people with basic dignity. And I will also share with you this, uh, Myra, our roots in San Antonio are on the southern side of the border. Um, United States number two trading partner is Mexico. Uh, the importance of the friendships and economic partnerships with we, that we have businesses to businesses and a smooth and efficient uh, border process for goods and services and people needs to happen. And, and that's what I hope um, the president will hear us say, uh, that we appreciate those efforts to, to reach out across the aisle. Now we need these uh, folks, that the extreme wings, uh, of, of Congress and the Republican Party to reach back and help us to, to work on these solutions together in a good faith manner. This is a country um, that deserves better. Our people want better. And we need Congress to start doing its job. Mayor Ron Nuremberg, always appreciate your time. And I'm glad we got the technical part of this all figured out. And uh, have a safe trip on Thursday. Thanks so much.